I hope you are having a great week. I'm Amy Groshong Walls, the president of Thimbleberry Financial and a certified financial planning practitioner. Earlier this week, I talked a little bit about budgeting and how budgeting may not always be the best way to save money because a lot of times it's done pretty arbitrarily. Instead, what can be really helpful is to start with what you actually spend money on and to really identify that, to know if it's appropriate and if it aligns with your values. Where you spend money is an indication of your values. So today, as promised, I'm back to talk about some strategies you can use to make budgeting or at least making boundaries with your spending a little bit more streamlined so you're not needing to pay attention to every dollar as you would with a budget. The first step in this process is probably already something you have done, and that is having your income directly deposited into some sort of account. I'll call this a bucket, but a checking account or maybe some sort of special money market account that has bill pay features on it. I think having bill pay features on this account is really, really valuable. It's also important that you keep part of your cash reserve in this bucket. It doesn't need to be the whole thing, but you want some amount of money in there to provide a cushion as you get started with this process. Once you have the bucket set up, you want to look at the expenses that you identified that you have and identify the ones that happen on a regular basis and that can easily be set up via bill pay or pulled directly out of your account. These are things like your mortgage and some of your utility bills. They might be a car payment, those types of things. You also want to identify the expenses that are so easy to not plan for. Things like trips to Costco. My family, we tend to go about every three months. Maybe it's travel or gifts. Maybe it's back to school clothing for the kids. So these Non-monthly expenses are important because they are part of your life and they shouldn't be catching you off guard. You can absolutely plan for them. So these dollars are actually just going to stay in the bucket until you actually need them. So that cash balance in the bucket is going to get higher. Really, if we think of it like water, the water level is just going to increase. The next thing to do is to look at your short-term variable expenses. These are things like gas for the car and groceries, hobbies, entertainment, dining out or takeout now in the days of COVID. What I suggest here is having those dollars flow directly over to a separate checking account that you use a debit card for and that you do that on a pretty regular basis. It could be monthly if that's what works best for you. It might also be weekly. That's what my husband and I choose to do. We have this money sent over each week. And one of the benefits of this is that this bucket of money, I'll call it your weekly spending account, is actually quite small compared to your overall income coming in. And there's a shift that happens mentally when you do this that allows you now to think about the money that hits this account on a regular basis instead of all of your income coming in. What that does is it shifts your thought process around what a lot of money is versus not. So for example, if $10,000 a month is hitting your checking account and you have the ability to spend all of that $10,000 each month, a $1,000 expense may not feel as big or a $500 expense may not feel as big. But if instead in this weekly spending account that you now are managing on a monthly basis, you have $1,500 or $2,000 a month hitting that account, then that $1,000 becomes a much bigger percentage and a much bigger deal. So let me talk about a couple of pitfalls. Like I said, my husband and I do this and we also like to remodel. And periodically we overspend our weekly account. One of the tricks is if you know that you're doing some things like Costco, as I talked about, that you do every three months, or for us, it's our home improvement budget. For that, we have just set up a separate account that we have that money flow into so that when we're at Home Depot or Lowe's, that money is right there. Now you might be saying, well, why not just put it on the credit card? I've found in the 17 years that I've been doing this, that people who put their expenses on their credit card, yes, get some benefits and some perks, but often outspend those people who don't. 
And so it's another one of those boundaries. And the reason that I think that happens is just justification of what you're getting back in return for that spending. And from what I've seen, those benefits don't outweigh making sure that you don't overspend. So one last tip, and that is make sure that you've kept your list of non-monthly expenses somewhere and how much you plan to be putting towards that. Because you will want to track when you transfer money to your short-term account to make sure you don't overspend on travel or gifts or those kinds of things. So I hope some of these strategies are things that are helpful to you. If you'd like to talk further, please go ahead and visit our website or give our office a call. And I hope you have a great rest of the week and a wonderful weekend. Thank you.